Welcome everyone and, and thank you for joining me again for prayer group as we're learning to pray bold prayers that, that honor God. Amen. And we're reading in the book, The Circle Maker by Pastor Mark Batterson. And, you know, I'm just so excited for what the Lord is doing, you know, through prayer group. And just as we are getting to know our Father, as we're getting to know His voice and, and what He's speaking to us. And, you know, as He's leading us in prayer that we're unifying, and just believing God and, and seeing His faithfulness. Amen. And let's go ahead and let's start in prayer this morning. Father God, we just come to you right now, Father, and Lord, we're seeking your face, Lord. We're seeking your plans for us today, Father, that, that each and every day you have a plan for us, Lord God, and Lord, you have things that, that you would like us to pray for. You have people that, that you would desire for us to reach out to and to pray for, to encourage, Lord, and I pray that, that each and every day, Father, that we would just pray, Father, have your way in my life today. And Lord, today, let's let's say that right now. Say, Father, have your way in my life today. Yes. And Lord, I just pray, Father God, as you begin to show us those that you would have us to love on, to encourage, to, to pray for, and you know, maybe even to, to send some scriptures to, Lord. I pray that we would be obedient to do that. Lord, that we wouldn't be fearful of it. Lord, that we would just step out in faith and say, you know, if you're asking me to encourage such and such today, I'm going to do that. And Lord, as you speak those things to us, that it's for a reason and that we shouldn't worry about what that person is going to say. We're, it's, we're going to know that if my father is asking me to do this, it's for a reason. And we just thank you for that, Father. We thank you, Father, that you give us opportunities to love on one another. And Lord, we just pray today, give us your heart for your people. Let us see one another through your eyes. Father God, and we thank you for what you're doing. And Father, we just pray today that you would continue to teach us how to pray, Father, that we would never feel like we, we know everything. Father, that each and every day you have moments that you want to speak to us. You have things that, that you desire to show us, God. And I pray that we would be obedient and where we would begin to lift up our voices unto you, that we would put our eyes on you, Father. Remind us, Lord God, that we have an eternity to spend with you in heaven, and there are people that you want us to take with us, our family and certain people that you place in our lives personally that you want us to reach out to, Father, that the pastor can't do everything. Lord, that you have called each and every one of us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, every creation, Father, that you love each and every one of us, the same, Father. You don't have favorites, Lord. And show us today who can, who can we witness to. Teach us, Lord God, how to witness. Father, who can I share my testimony with? Father, we thank you, Father. Help us to be intentional, Lord, to want to help others, to put others before ourselves. Father God, I pray that you would break selfishness off of us today, that you would break pride off of us today, that you would break the lies of the enemy off of us, Father, that we would come to know you personally, Father. And I pray that we would be obedient to every single word that you say, Father, and that we wouldn't question, is this the Lord? We wouldn't question what you're asking us to do, that we would just immediately say, I'm going to do this. Yes, I'm going to call this person. I'm going to share the love of Jesus with this person, Father. And we pray, have your way. Give us boldness. Give us courage today, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm going to find my page here, and then we'll begin to read. And um, it's on chapter 8. Uh, we're on page 87 in our book, once again, The Circle Maker by um, Mark Batterson. And um, the title is Persistence quotient. In standardized math tests, Japanese children consistently score higher than their American counterparts, while some assume that a natural proclivity toward mathematics is the primary difference. Researchers have discovered that it may have more to do with effort than ability. In one study involving first graders, students were given a difficult puzzle to solve. 
The researchers weren't interested in whether or not the children could solve the puzzle. They simply wanted to see how long they would try before giving up. The American children lasted, on average, 9.47 minutes. The Japanese children lasted 13.93 minutes. In other words, the Japanese children tried about 40% longer. Is it any wonder that they score higher on math exams? Researchers concluded that the difference in math scores might have less to do with intelligence quotient and more to do with persistence. And I highlighted that word right there, persistence, the persistence quotient. The Japanese first graders simply tried harder. And you know, the, that first part up there that we are reading, that it said that it has more to do with effort than ability. And sometimes we give up too soon because we don't think that we're able, but no, you know, really try hard and know that the Lord, he can help us. He's our teacher. He can teach us how to do anything, right? So, so don't give up. The, that study not only explains the difference in standardized math scores, the implications are true no matter where you turn. It doesn't matter whether it's athletics or acad academics, music or math. There are no shortcuts. There are no substitutes. Success is a derivative of persistence. And I wanted to read with you in James chapter 1, verses 2 through 8. Um, first, let's read from the New King James Version. James chapter 1 and verses 2 through 8 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. And you know, I've read this scripture over and over, but just the other day, the part that, that really stuck out to me when I was reading this is where it says, count it all joy. So my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. We're to count it all joy. <laughs> Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. In verse 4, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. In verse 6, but let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. In verse 7, for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Verse 8, he is a double-minded man unstable in all his ways if we think or have doubt when we're praying it's like and it's like a double-minded man that's unstable in all his ways and i wanted to read this in the amplified classic as well james chapter 1 and verse 2 consider it wholly joyful holy like complete joy <laughs> we are to take complete joy when testing comes like knowing, Father, you got this. I'm not going to worry about this situation right now. I'm just going to laugh and know, Father, you have made a way. I'm going to laugh in the face of the enemy, right? Knowing that he has already made a way. Our Father has already made a way. So I'm going to read that again. James chapter 1, verse 2, the Amplified Classic. Consider it, consider it wholly joyful, my brethren, whenever you are enveloped in or encounter trials, of any sort or fall into various temptations. And the part that really stuck out me, to me here is it says, whenever you are enveloped in, like an envelope, you are just surrounded by trials and tribulations. Don't worry. Because, and then in verse three, be assured and understand that the trial and proving of your faith bring out endurance and steadfastness and patience in verse four but let endurance and steadfastness and patience have full play and do a thorough work so that you may be people perfectly and fully developed with no defects lacking 
and nothing. And I wanted to read, um, a lot of times I like to look up definitions and meaning, meaning of words. And I looked up the word steadfast and it means firmly fixed in place, immovable, not subject to change, firm in belief, determination, loyal, right? So as trials and tribulation comes, we are going to stand tall. We're going to be immovable. We're just going to be full of joy knowing, my God, you have already made a way. I'm going to trust you in this process. I'm not going to allow my emotions to consume me right now. I'm not going to allow fear or worry to consume me right now. Father, I'm choosing to stand and trust you in this. Amen. Don't allow the enemy to steal your joy. Don't allow your situations to steal your joy. Say, Father, the joy of the Lord is my strength, right? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Um, and I'm going to continue on page 87, the last paragraph. More than a decade ago, Anders Ericsson and his colleagues at Berlin's Elite Academy of Music did a study with musicians. With the help of professors, they divided violinists into three groups, world-class soloists, good violinists, and those who were unlikely to play professionally. All of them started playing at roughly the same age and practiced about the same amount of time until the age of eight. That is when their practice habits diverged. The researchers found that by the age of 20, the average players had logged about 4,000 hours of practice time. The good violinists totaled about 8,000 hours the elite performers set the standard with 10,000 hours. While there is no denying that innate ability dictates some of your upside potential, your potential is only tapped via persistent effort. Persistence is the magic bullet, and the magic number seems to be 10,000. Neurologist Daniel Levitin notes, the emerging picture from such studies is that 10,000 hours of practice is required to achieve the level of mastery associated with being a world-class expert. In anything, in study after study of composers, basketball players, fiction writers, ice skaters, concert pianists, chess players, master criminals, and what have you, this number comes up again and again. No one has yet found a case in which true world-class expertise was accomplished in less time. It seems that it takes the brain this long to assimilate all that it needs to know to achieve true mastery. Is prayer any different? It is a habit to be cultivated. It is a discipline to be developed. It is a skill to be practiced. And while I don't want to reduce praying hard to time logged, if you want to achieve mastery, it might take 10,000 hours. This I know for sure. The bigger the dream, the harder you will have to pray, really to be persistent, you know, in the Lord. And you can do all this research and watch videos and read books on prayer. You can have all this knowledge about it, but, you know, it takes experience where you really push into prayer, where you personally begin to use your own voice in prayer. You know, pray the Word of God, and, um, read the Scripture out loud, and just personalize the Scripture, right? In Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, put on your armor, personalize it. You know, that's one way to, to start off in prayers, right? Praying the Word of God, and you know, when you're praying the Word of God, that's God's perfect will, right? So. You know, take the time daily to pray and to intercede and step out in faith and believe God to, to move mountains in your life and just know your, your Father loves you and He desires to spend time with you. And as you begin to do this on a daily basis, um, you're going to come to know His voice and, and His leading, you know, as you pray. And, you know, a lot of times as I'm praying, He'll put people on my heart and, you know, I'll hear a name or a situation or a church, you know, or, um, and I'll just begin to pray 
And uh, also, if you have received the Holy Spirit and the evidence of speaking in tongues, and praying in the Holy Spirit also, when we don't know how to pray, Romans 8, 26 and 27, I'm going to read that to you right now. Romans 8, 26. And I'm going to read this in the New King James Version. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. In verse 27, Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So when we don't know how to pray, we can pray in the Holy Spirit. We're praying God's perfect will right? And, and we need to spend time praying in the Holy Spirit as well. You know, I want to encourage you daily to at least pray 30 minutes in the Holy Spirit. You know, every day, you know, make a note of this in your journal, in your phone, your notes, to spend time praying in the Holy Spirit 30 times, I mean, for 30 minutes a day. And also to read in Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, putting on your armor, personalize that, and, you know, put your armor on daily, Amen. Um, and then in verse Romans 8 and 28, I want to read 28 as well. It says, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose, where it says all things work together for the good to those who love God. It says all things, which is good or bad. He works them all out for our good. And know that your father loves you. He loves you so much. He desires to spend time with you. He desires to, for you just to sit and listen to what he has to say. And, you know, to read the word of God. If you feel like you don't know the voice of your father, read your Bible every day. And ask him to give you understanding of the word of God. And as you do that and you spend time in prayer and just writing things that he's speaking to you, you know, that's how you get to know the voice of the Lord. Amen. Well, I'm going to stop here and, you know, I want to, let's spend some time in prayer right now. Father, we just thank you, Father, for what you're doing today, Lord God. Lord, you're just so awesome. You're so amazing, Father. You work in mysterious ways, Father, in ways that we could never, never fathom or, or understand, Father God. Like, how did this happen? Lord, you always come through, and we thank you for that. Lord, and I pray that we would put our trust and our faith in you today, or that we would be steadfast, steadfast, immovable, Lord. We would be firm. We would stand tall, Lord, even as trials and tribulations envelop us, as they're all around us, Father God, that we would wholly count that joy, knowing, Father, you have already made a way. Father, there's, there's a reason for this situation that you are going to show us, Lord God, just how awesome and how amazing you are, how faithful you are, Lord. And I just pray today, Father, if anyone is holding on to bitterness or unforgiveness, Father, I pray today that they would release that bitterness, Father, that they would forgive that person in that situation right now, Lord God. Show them if they are holding in any bitterness and unforgiveness. Just ask the Lord right now, Lord, show me. Am I holding on to bitterness? And am I holding on to unforgiveness? Show me, Father. Right now, show me. And you know, as you begin to, to hear who you are holding unforgiveness against, just ask the Lord and say, Father, I choose to forgive and, and say that name in that situation. And, you know, just continue to do that. Anytime that thought comes in your mind or that feeling comes up of unforgiveness, just say, I choose to forgive over and over and pray for that person. Pray for that person. And then the Lord will bring healing to you. We don't want to hold on to unforgiveness and bitterness. It causes us pain choose to forgive today, choose to walk in love and, 
see his faithfulness through it. Through the hardest situation, he can bring complete healing. He wants to bring complete healing to your life in that. Thank you for it, Father. Have your way today, Lord, in each and every one of our lives. Lord, teach us how to pray. Father, teach us, Lord God, when tribulations come, Father, how to count it all joy, to stand firm, to be steadfast, to persevere, to be persistent, Lord, to trust you, to stand in faith, to not see with our natural eyes, but to see, Lord, with the spiritual eyes that you have given us, Lord. Give us discernment today, Lord, and give us the ability today, Lord, to forgive and to press through, Father God, and in prayer, Father God, to be persistent, to stand in faith, Lord God. And Lord, we pray today for the lost, where we pray household salvation, we speak household salvation over every one of our family members, Father. As we name each and every one of our family members today, Father, and name off Michael, Gavin, Landon, Hannah, Annika, and Luke, my parents, Lord, my sisters, my brothers, my nieces, my nephews, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, Lord, Pastor Michael's family, Father, Lord, that as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord, as it says in Joshua 24, 15. Lord, let that be my prayer each and every day to pray for my family, to pray for the lost, God, to come to know you, Lord. Ephesians 1, 17 and 18, Father, I pray that you would give us as we named as I named off my family and those watching and listening today are naming off their families. Father, we pray on behalf of our families right now that you would give them wisdom and revelation to know you, as it says in Ephesians 1, 17 and 18, that you would open the eyes of their understanding, enlighten them in the hope that you have called them to. Father God, let them know their purpose and the rich generational inheritance that you have for their lives, Father God. We break generational curses today in Jesus' name, and we speak your generational blessings over our families all the way down to 1,000 generations, Lord God. Help us, show us, Father, what we need to release and what we need to speak forth. Show us today, Father, that we, Lord, have the power and the authority to come against the plans of the enemy Father, that nothing shall by any means harm us. Father, and I just pray your perfect will and plan to be fulfilled today in each and every day, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. No, you have the victory. You have the victory today in each and every day with every situation that you're facing. Step out in faith. Count it all joy. Be persistent. Be steadfast in prayer, amen. Standing in faith, knowing that your God is a mighty God. My God is a mighty God, and he's already made a way. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you again for watching and, and listening today, for, for joining us, and you know, continue to, to join with me in prayer. And just ask the Lord, teach me how to pray today. Spend time with him each and every day. Amen. Well, you know, we'll see you next week, Tuesday, 1 o'clock, but know that you can watch and, and listen at any time on YouTube.